another video in our series on investing and this one deals with how do CGT discounts and losses work? This is a really common area of client confusion and it's not uncommon where a client provides us with their information, they say I've worked it out, I've got a $10,000 capital gain and we go back and we say mm, it's wrong and they go why? So I want to explain the information to you so that you've got the knowledge and it'll help you avoid mistakes yourselves. So tax law prescribes the order in which certain calculations occur for CGT purposes and capital gains tax is a perfect example. Now section 102.5 of the Income Tax Assessment Act 1997 if you have the, the interest uh, can be Google and it prescribes the order and the method. Okay. So step one involves reducing the current year's um, discount and non-discount gains by losses in the current year. So discount and non-discount. Okay. Then we move to step two. So we reduce the result of step one by the prior year losses. Right. So if we go back and note in step one, the taxpayer gets to choose to apply losses to either the discount or the non-discounted gains first. Because that might preserve some of the discounted gain for the further steps which result in tax. So think of it this way. Many people say, I sold shares for 100 bucks, discount gains, that's 50. I also had a carry forward loss of 50, therefore my capital gain is zero. We go, not quite. It's actually your gain of 100, less your loss of 50, equals 50. Now, we can halve that. So you've, so see the difference one is a zero result, the other $25 taxable. And that's an important difference everybody should know and understand, particularly if you're also investing in ETFs because you've got your cost base adjustments, that comes in as a further factor, and then you might even have distributions of discount or non-discount CGT amounts from a trust, so that can also further affect things. So step three of the CGT calc then says we reduce the discounted gains by the discount percentage, and that's commonly 50% for individuals, or where a discretionary trust is involved, it might pass through to the beneficiaries in the same manner. And step four is if a small business concession applies, then you apply those now, and then step five, you add your discounted gains and your non-discounted gains, and that is the taxable amount. Now, it's important to note that the order in which we perform these calculations is important, but also when trusts are involved, we sometimes get queries from clients and they say, hang on, the discounted gain is five grand and yet you've distributed 10 grand to the beneficiary. That is correct because the taxpayer who's the beneficiary must also consider their losses. So they get a 10 grand discount again, which if it's their only gain, yes, that may well be discounted to 50%, five grand. But if they had a CGT loss, <coughs> it affects them. So this is why that occurs. Now I want to explain two instances where some losses can still be lost because CGT losses roll forward indefinitely. There's no loss of them, but they can be lost in two situations. Um, <clears throat> death ends tax losses. So if the taxpayer dies with CGT losses, the deceased estate deals with income produced after death. At the time of death, those losses are just gone. Now, that can produce a very strong tax planning um, element in some situations. I've seen one or two clients in this situation. We were fortunate enough to be able to advise a client and their daughter 
Um, he had terminal, a terminal illness and didn't have long to live. And it was literally bedside advice, but it was a case he had very substantial investments and he had very large unrealised gains and unrealised losses. And we quickly assessed what that amount was prior to death and determined that his losses amounted to many hundreds of thousands of dollars, say 200,000. And his gains amounted to potentially three or 400,000. So our advice was to sell sufficient securities that produced profits and losses so that his net actual realised gains were zero. And we did that, we assisted that. And he died a few weeks later. And you know, the, the value to his daughter was a saving of $160,000 from his estate in tax that she would have paid had she inherited those assets at the cost base from when he'd acquired them. So that's an important issue here. So don't think of it as a rather tacky subject as much as think of it as a tax saving. I think we all like to cheat the tax man genuinely, and there's one way. So death ends the tax losses, so bear that in mind. If you know of somebody with either realised tax losses or unrealised tax losses. The other way is section 102.52 contains a rule concerning bankruptcy. It basically says a person who was earlier made bankrupt or released from bankruptcy will lose access to prior year CGT losses. Now, the reason for that, I've also seen instances where this has benefited a taxpayer or affected a taxpayer because a bankrupt may have reported tax payable on gains and losses and this is an integrity rule because they may never have paid that tax. So it says we're going to wipe the slate clean. So this is, it says if you've basically been bankrupt we wipe the slate clean you no longer have prior year losses, okay? So be wary of that. But otherwise, I hope that's helped explain how CGT discounts and losses work. Um, one further point that CGT discounts is just general income tax losses. Now, general income tax losses carry forward indefinitely, subject to bankruptcy rules, but carry forward indefinitely. Non-residents particularly who might hold property and are producing losses over years and they're accumulating can actually get some CGT benefits. Now the CGT benefit is this. By selling shares or investments for a discount, they will include the discount amount in their taxable income, providing that's applicable. Okay, They might need to be a resident, all sorts of issues. So. Get your own advice on this, but <clears throat> let's assume they can sell and they produce a CGT amount that's subject to tax. Those accumulated tax losses will discharge the reduced indexed amount of the gain so that no tax might be payable. So if you have accumulating tax losses in your CGT assets, etc., it's worthwhile getting some advice. And we hope you found that all helpful. And if you uh, need to speak to us, give us a call. Otherwise, we hope you enjoy further videos in this series or any other, other of our videos. And we look forward to speaking to you soon. Cheers. Bye.